welcome back to another new video and um, as you can see from the title it's um, going to be the uh, Corgi 236 Austin A60 driving school car and um, I suppose you, you must have seen how I did do one of these quite a while back now and it was um, it wasn't really like a full sort of showing everything how I restored it and all that the painting you know anything like that it was just like a reassembly video really it was one of my early ones before I started getting a bit more into this lark like <laughs> um anyway before we start i thank everybody for all the nice comments again on the last video the old um uh, what was it uh, the, the crane yeah cold coal's crane the dinky coal's crane right, last time and thanks everyone for all your nice comments on that video and appreciate that as usual i'll give a quick mention two names here um shirio eight uh jeff baker Peter Richardson, Bob and Kim Rivard, Kenny Bakus, Stephen White, Ian B, Flying Valiant, Johnny Ties, Peter Parker, Adrian Smith, Glenn Stimson, and Martin Dare. Thank you everyone for all your nice comments. I've had a couple of emails. Um, oh, by the way, before I start, I, I did have Ian, Mr. Ian Halley, he did send me, as I said last time, I think, he sent me some. Um, a few models which I've already done on video so I haven't sort of showed this again I might do one in the future like I said Ian this is the, this is the battle build you sent me so far I'm waiting actually waiting for a steering wheel to come because I haven't got a steering wheel going up but there he is so far now. he ain't come out too bad at all has he like I say I've got to put the old steering wheel in and um, then we'll be well away and I've got another one he was that you sent through and I'm waiting for a screen. <laughs> Just to let you know, I am doing them. And there's, I've changed it slightly. That was the old um, the Bentley that you sent me. And I've got, like I said, a few others of his, but I will be showing you on restoration videos. Anyway, a couple of emails. I said I said I had a couple of emails. Um, David Ruck. Hi, Bob. If you would like to have some of my Corby models due to him becoming disabled, sorry to hear that, um, David. He can't do them himself. So he's going to send me a few models as well. So I don't know what's coming. He's going to sort them out for me. Thanks, David, for that. And Peter Orton sent me an email. He, he's a guy. I think he's a guy who sent me the actual tractor in the first place. Remember that tractor I'd done that Massey. Um, he he said sorry, sorry to bother you, but you're not bothering me. Um, it might be something you might consider trivial. I'm restoring the Corgi 66 model Massey Ferguson 165 tractor like the one I donated, yeah. He did send me that one. Earlier this year, it's pretty much ready for assembling, but I'm struggling a bit with the front axle clicking. Remember that little bit of plastic I put in, so it makes, when it goes around it, click, it click, it sounds like an engine. The, the strip is completely broken off, which yours was as well, Pete, by the way. Um, so I'm struggling to figure out how long it was. Yeah, I did for a while, but you just, like I said, I did tell him, just keep filling around with it, cut it a bit too long to start with, and then just try and sort of, as you shut the bottom onto it, just try and see if you can see how far it's gonna go down, and just sort of gradually cut it off until it gets to the right level. It's just gonna hit the roller part, so the spikes click it. But you just gotta fill it around with it, that's all, that's all I did. Because I didn't know how long it was meant to be, and I don't measure much year one. I don't measure anything I could go by eye all the time. And um, yeah, that's about it really. Just just fiddle around with that until you get it right. Oh what did I make it out of? It, all it was is a bit of um bit of plastic from um God, what's a um you know like the cake boxes. It's, it's slightly thicker than the cake box plastic. I don't know what I got it from, it was something like that. It was just like a little thin piece of plastic, so you got a bit of flex. That's all it was. And that's all I used for it. Hope you and Mrs. Bob were okay with the best Peter. Thanks a lot, Pete, for that. Uh, not very many comments. I'm not going to read out too many comments today because I want to get into the video. Uh, I'm trying to cut these apps a bit down, you know, down a bit. I don't want you getting too bored with all my rabble. All bloody garble coming out of me gob. Um, <laughs> Star Wars J. Hi Bob. Hey Bob. Another great video mate. What's the difference between the Royce Wheels version and the original Corgi ones about the Batmobiles? Well, I did tell him 
the Whiz Wheels is the later ones, are like 70s onwards, something like that. 72 onwards, I think they've done them, something like that. And well, they, obviously, the Whiz Wheels, they've got plastic wheels for a start, they're not so good as the, the proper early Batmobile. And the early Batmobiles, they got the, they got the die cast wheels or the metal wheels with the bat signal on it. And plus, you've got the, road, the, the thing on the camera on the, the back wheels that makes the flame go in and out on the early Batmobiles. I think the noses on the Batmobile is a bit more in recessed as well and some of the where the fins are and you've got the pointed fins and um, well it's a, it's a lot better model really to, you know better than uh, more detailed than um, what the later whiz wheels are I'm not, I'm not keen on the whiz wheel ones but that's about the, diff the only difference really that it's just that it's just the, the back hubs is different and the um, like I say you've got the the rotating frame, the frame comes in and out on that. But apart from that, really, is there's not a lot of difference in them. It's just them extra things that work. Um, that was uh, Star Wars J, Paul, 62 IST, hi Bob. That was an awesome restoration. Your patience amazes me. May I ask where you purchase the rotating stand from? I've been looking for a while, but I found nothing suitable. Best wishes to you and yours, Paul. He's on about the old the stand one, you know, the one I showed before and after it sort of just revolved. It's on the eBay, mate. I get you all know I get everything from eBay. Yeah, I, I think I've got it I think it was a Chinese one that's come from China. I had to wait about a month, I think. Something like that. But I, I don't think it's very dear, less than a fiber with the delivery. They not they're not very right dear. But yeah, they only work on a USB sort of plug. But that's where I got mine from. It was from China, I'm sure of it. You just look on eBay, just put rotating display stand or something like that, and then they'll come up with loads of them on there. <clears throat> I think I think you can get them like UK supplies doing that. Right? Jeff Fort, great work, Bob. I've got one of these in the pipeline to restore for my nephew. This is the um, crane, coast crane. What were the orange and yellow colours I used? Were they high coats? Yes, they were high coats. I can show you on the I did tell you that I always use high coat paint than Drago. So I'll grab that one. Put that one there and I've got an orange back there. And it's four. Oh no, it's not a jasmine thing. No, they're both back there. Apologise. These are the two colours I use. I've got this Ford Signo Canary Yellow. If you can see that. And the other one is the Ford. Signo Orange, just basic, basic, you know, don't have, don't have to be that, what you use, just a basic orange and a yellow, that's all you need, that's all I've done mine with, I wasn't too fussy about the actual shade of what orange it's got to be or anything like that, as long as it looks alright at the end, that's all that, it looked better than it did when I started, that was it, yeah, so that answers your question, Jeff, and from the crap out Nick from Jersey, great job, Bob, he done with these, remember? Not sure you would have learned much from watching my video, but me doing mine, other than how not to do things, lots of that. But thanks for the mention. Uh, it is a fiddly one to put back together, but you did great. Lovely paint job, the yellow covered extremely well, as did the orange, yeah, because they are funny colours to cover, actually. You've got to do it light and then do a few more coats as well to build it up. One coat ain't going to be enough. Both of those colours seem to be hard to do sometimes. I didn't realise that there were supposed to be decals on the sides, as the chevrons. I mean, I only noticed them because I saw a few pictures on Google of them. Because every time I'm doing something, like when I'm doing a restoration, if I haven't got all the sort of the final thing looking at me, because a lot of them are so worn, you can't make out what's meant to be on or what. And I go, go on Google, I just type in which one it is, and I just look through all the pictures and see. Sometimes you see like a, an original mint one there, and I found one and it did have chevrons on the side. And he's not sure if he'd done that on his. He said, another lovely restoration, top job, Bob. Congratulations on free, free, reaching 3,000 subscribers. You and Mr. Bob take care, best wishes, Nick. P.S. He's going to watch his video now <laughs> of, the, of the crane, because he's forgotten how he did it and how it looked at the end. So he's not sure if he's got the chevrons on there or not. So. So, um, Nick, <laughs> good luck with that, mate. The chevrons is easy to get, though, mate. They just type on black and white chevrons on Google. You know it's all that. You do your own decals. And um, then you can make them up from there, you know, get a size and do it from there on. 
But anyway, yeah, thanks everyone again for um, sticking with the channel. Thanks for um, all your nice comments, and um, I'll be back again very soon. But for now, let's get on and see this improved version of the um, Corgi A60 uh, 236 driving school car. This is a, a bit more, a bit more like a, a re-release of the original version, and it's a bit more shows a bit more. So, um, till the next time, bye bye for now. See ya. Bye. As you can see, this is the old um, Austin A60 driving school car. It's the um, 236 on the numbers. And this one was sent by Mr. Ian Halley quite a while ago now. And there's a hole in there. I don't know what that's all about, but I have drilled it apart. Or did I drill it apart? I can't remember now. No, I think it was already drilled apart, actually. Yeah, I think it was. So anyway... Well, um, we're going to tidy this one up a bit. It's not a fantastic paint job. You can see lines in it and all that. We're going to get it nice and shiny. And, um, well, there you go. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> like I always do. Enough of the waffle. To take this apart. Two of them two holes out. And you just take your base plate off like that. The wheels just come out. It's quite a simple one to take apart this one. It's only the two rivets. Now, anybody doing this one, if they're not sure about all this, this McGovern's in here, it's quite straightforward, really. When that's um, properly shut, that, that there, that, the wheel on the top steers it like that. So when you're actually... Um, taking this apart if you want to use your phone and take a picture just to remind you how this goes back here then you know i mean that could be the easiest way but it will only go back one way anyway so these come out like this like they just come off of there and they only go on one side you got you've got the left and the right and, the, and they'll only go on a certain way so we that there comes out like that if i pick it out it's like a thing on there that like, goes through the suspension. And then your suspension piece comes out like that. A lot of the times on these, that's broke. The suspension at the back's broke, but you can always, you can repair it. Now this bit here, <clears throat> you want to take these out as well and don't lose these. You can, you know, you know, you can make new ones out of like a nail or something like that if you've got it, if you do lose one, but you want to try and keep keep them if you can. Don't don't lose them. To put the aside. That's your um, steering things. That one just comes out of there. That lifts out. And you got your driver and your what do you call it? And that wheel won't fall out until you turn it like that. That like you see. And that's it. And, that's, and then all that comes out. And that's well, that's all there is to it, really. That there's a that screen one in it before. That's a screen I had because the screen that was in here was a bit duff. I think that's what I, I think I did drill this one actually and, and change the screen on it. But that, I'm not going to use that screen. That's one of them um, bloody old um, plastic vac, vac type screens and I'm not really happy with it. So I, I might not use that one. I have got a new screen for it. Now this cast in here, like I said, it's got like that little low in there. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what that's all about, really, because there's no O in the bottom of that. It's just a little O there. So I don't know how that got there, really. It's, I mean, I don't know if you drilled it out, Ian, did you? And put something in there? I don't know. So, what we're going to do, I happen to have another casting of this. I'm not going to bother filling all that up. That's all you got to do is, when it's stripped, is fill that up with a bit of um, the old epoxy resin, really. That's, it's not a big job to do. But, you know, to save time, Here's one I made earlier, <laughs> Blue Peter. There's a screen I'm going to use as a proper metal, or metal on my proper plastic, you know, 
it's a flowers one, but it's a proper hard plastic one, if you know what I mean. It's all been polished up, so that's all ready to use. And this one's already been pre-stripped, because I had this in the um, spares box, and I, I didn't have the parts to do it really, so there's no O. That's the main thing. So I ain't got to fart about with that. So this one's ready for spraying, actually. I haven't sprayed it up yet, obviously, but we got to strip strip the base plate out. That's got to be stripped. Also, this one never had the, the figures in it. And I managed to get these two figures. They're very hard to get. They are original ones. I paid about nearly a fiver for them, I think. Plus, you had to pay postage. So they cost me about eight quid on eBay for them figures with the postage. But they are original. As you can see, they are original um, figures. If it focused kindly for me. There, you can see their little faces, look. So anyway, we're going to change the tires on this one as well, so they're all coming off. They're going in the old spares box, because I'm not happy with them tires. They look a bit bit worn. I know I've done this one before on a previous video a long time ago, but I just showed the reassembly of it, actually, that was it. It wasn't an actual restoration, it was a reassembly of the car. I just, you know, that's one of my early videos when I was... Uh, a new boy, if you could say. Um, this one here needs a good scrub up, so I'll scrub that one up in the old um, washing machine thing. And um, that's about it, really. All we got to do is clean these bits up, get these wheels polished up. I think they've been painted by the looks of it. So I'm going to get them, get that ground off, and I'm going to get polish on that. I don't like paint if I can help it. We're always used to polish. And we're going to get this one sprayed up. So the the colour I use for this one is Olympic Blue, if anybody's interested. Because there is two versions of this car. You can use the Riviera Blue for the other version, which is a 255. This is a 236. Because this is the right-hand drive version. But if you ever want to do a 255, all the casting, all this here, L-plate things, it's all the same casting. They use the same casting. I mean, you'd think for the left-hand drive one, they they would have changed the castle and put that on the opposite side because you'd be driving on the left, wouldn't you? But they don't. That's gorgy. <clears throat> but all you got to do is cut these in the middle. They they sit on a little bar type thing, and then just switch them around, and that steering wheel will come out of there, and it'll go in that side. You, but the trouble is, you're gonna have to glue it onto that side because there's a little nick gear up for the steering wheel as well. But you can swap it around and, and make a two, three, six out of it if you want. To or 255 sorry and you, you'd have to spray it the Riviera Blue for that if you wanted to do a, the 255 version why you'd want to do that I don't know but they say it's a rare one but I mean if anybody opened up what you'd done they'd know it was a you know one that you just bodged up yourself sort of thing so we're going to stick with the right hand drive English version of the 236 one because it should be a right-hand drive because of the L-plates. Because they're not on the right side for a left-hand drive, are they? They're not on the right side, get it? The right... Never mind. Anyway, I'll go and spray this. We'll show that. We'll do the spray. I'm going to spray straight over that. I'm not going to um, strip it. And I'll, in the meantime, I'll get this stripped and, and I'll spray this up again. The base plate. And get all that done as well. Is he, how's he going on? I've already got the deals drilled out, as you can see. Yeah, he's all right. He'll, he'll go on there nicely. And we'll um, get on and get this one done. It's not going to be a very long video, but I don't want to drag it out too long. I, I'm very busy at the moment. I've got other things to do, and, you know, I'm just trying to keep everyone happy. And that's going to be that for now. Right then guys, before we spray the car, I've took the steering wheel, I've got a good scrub with a bit of soapy water and a tough brush. Now it, it looks a bit faded this plastic, now I'm hoping this is going to work, I'm going to dose it in the old, what do you call it, the um, pledge floor shine stuff and see if that's going to liven this up a bit. I'm hoping it's going to make it darken up slightly, so we'll see what happens. It might just wake the plastic up a bit, I don't know if it will work, it might not. But 
Unless you try, I don't know. It works with screens, it livens it up. It's called Revive It, so... <laughs> is it going to revive this? Well, it doesn't look any darker, does it? <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. But, you know, at least it's... At least it's a lot shinier than it was. So I'm going to leave it like that. Because it does look nice and shiny. So I'm going to just let that dry. At least we'll have a shiny wheel to put on the top. Okay then. Let's get this thing sprayed up. And this colour here is, like I said, it's Olympic blue if anybody wants to know. It's the um, high coat range. And this is the colour that I seem to find that matches this one best of all. So, Olympic blue. So, we're going to give it a quick flash over first. I mean, I ain't going to show you the second coat, but I should probably put three coats of this on. And then lacquer it. Well, I'll be, I'll be doing the stripes first, but then I'll be lacquering it after that. But, this, this goes on out the nicest paint. And there you go. That don't look too bad at all. Okay guys, let me switch this fan off a minute. There, it's a bit quiet, but the fan on is so bloody hot out here. As you can see, I've done the base plate, I've re, um, redone that, you know, got it stripped and repainted that. Bodywork's all done now. You might have noticed I didn't cover this stripe up. Some people, when they do these, they cover that up and just have the bare metal, but it's meant to be painted on, so... I'm going to paint it on, so I've actually bought, down Wilco, of all things, I bought some tape down there, and this is, I noticed that it looked very much like Tamiya sort of tape, so I'm going to try this out, it's only 150 a row, and what I've done, I've stuck a bit on the edge of the old bench, got my scope, I'll cut it nice and thin, like that, so I'm going to try, if I can, to mask it up with this and see how, how this comes out because you know for the price of it and the price of Tamiya Tamiya is so bloody expensive and I'm wondering if this will do the job as well as that and I ain't going to know until I actually do try it so what better way is to try it out on this one it seems to stick on there alright so it's pretty it's pretty sticky stuff so it should stay it should stay there I was coming off at the end a bit there but I can always put another bit on there but I'm going to try this out and just see how we get on you never know it could be a, a good bit of, you know a good bit of an investment really buying this stuff instead of the expensive Tamiya. Start it off there. I hate masking these up. I see any trouble with these. This line looks straight, but it isn't straight, if you know what I mean. It's not quite dead straight. Like there, I'm going to come back a bit. I hate masking things up, especially trying to do it on camera. Be a lot easier if I had it on my lap and do it, you know. I'm gonna have to let that go straight there because it's not gonna um see I'm hoping this ain't gonna bleed. I know the Tamiya is very good, it doesn't bleed. So I'm hoping I can get away with this. But like I say, I'm not going to know until I actually do it. So I'll cut another piece off. I need a couple of short pieces actually, so... <clears throat> I should just stick this around here with that. You 
yeah it is coming off on the edges a bit folks I think when I spray this I'm gonna have to just check all these edges and make sure it is stuck pretty fast before I give it a whip over because there's only gonna be a quick a quick sort of flash over to do this but it's pretty thick stuff and there's another bit to go around there <clears throat> I know I'm cut this thinner because I want to just it's only 150 a row anyway not really bothered about it but if you want to cut it thin it's up to you That's what I'll have to do that is just make sure all these pieces are really pushed down hard on the edges before I flash it over and that should be enough to sort it out the piece on there anyway you know what I'm going to do now I'm going to come back use the magic of YouTube on this one to um, finish masking this off so here we go cover up there we go it's all done I'm going to press all these sides down I'm going to just take this away a sec just to give it a quick flash and I'll bring it back once it's dried and we'll um, see see how it's come out right <clears throat> here we go let's see what this has come out like so we'll, um, I mean it wasn't sticking on really hard so it should come off pretty easy this stuff that's why I said when you if you're going to use this make sure you um, push them edges down nice and tight before you actually shoot the first bit of spray on it just to make sure I'm hoping it's going to be all right and it don't stick too fast and take the bloody paint off i only painted this yesterday but it's been so hot in here all night in this shed it should have hardened up enough for doing this now with the with the weather the weather's been so good let's see what this is coming out like ah doesn't look too bad folks at the moment just hope there's no bits that's bled through I might get some more of this if it's any good. For 150 a row, it's going to be a lot cheaper than the bloody Tamiya. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. So far, it's looking pretty good. It's coming off nice and easy anyway, it's not. It's not leaving any residue on, on the actual paint. So, because it inch like a really hard sticking masking tape, but it's not bleeding through. So far, it hasn't. Not bad at all. Let's take it off nice and steady. There's a couple of little marks there I might have to cover in a bit. But overall, quite happy with this result with this. Well, what do you think? Not too bad at all, I'd say. There's just a couple of little tiny marks on the front there. And that's it. Apart from that, pretty good. So there's our stripe done. Now, we can get on and put it back together. I told you it's going to be a short video. Sorry about that, but that's the way it goes. 
So now we can put this back together and get the old decals on it and or the learner plates and paint the old headlights in. And um, that'll be another one saved. I forgot to say, <laughs> of course I've got to lacquer this and I have done so now. So this is all now dried nicely. We've had a lovely day yesterday. So the stripe, as you see, ain't come out that bad at all. It's pretty... Um, pretty um, defined I can get the bloody thing to focus there you go not looking too bad so that's all done right let's put it back together all I've got to do after that is of course I've got to do the, all the painting in here I ain't going to bother showing all that that's a bit bloody boring watching that you know the, you know the score with that get a brush and a bit of paint you know I mean not, I'm going to use Molotov on it just to give it that bit of extra bling and um, of course put the old stickers on the learner stickers they gotta go on but the finish on this is coming up very nice as you can see so anyway let's get this put back together now first of all as I always say usually the last thing in always the first back in so the old screen goes in this and doesn't fit that perfect actually this screen I've got a feeling I'm gonna have to shear a bit more of this off around here because if you look there where it goes around that bit, there's a gap in the front where it's meant to sit up. It's meant to sit in there like that, by right. So I think what I'll do before I do this assembly, I will shear a bit more of that off. I think the best way to do that is a repro screen T. I I mean, you can't, you know, as I said before, you always get these problems with repro stuff and screens are usually the worst. So if, I'm, if I could just go around this and just shear it off like that, let's get your knife in there. You don't need to sand it or anything, Just you just want it to fit around that other piece a bit better. And it only needs a little bit taken off, just so it sits in there just that little bit further back you just as well, just as well do all this because you ain't going to be happy when it's in there and it's not sitting how it should be so you know make sure before you actually put anything back that you're happy with how it sits so you still need a bit more there that so I ain't going to show all this I'm going to start shearing all this off now you've seen the way I do it I'm going to come around here and go around and I'll be back when I've done it. I'm going to switch this fan off before I start. There, you can hear me a bit better now. I've put the, the old um, wheel in the bottom. What I'm going to do with this screen, I've got it in there, it's fitting better, but I want to make sure it doesn't move when I put the bottom, or the um, seating area in. So, as I always do, as you know, I get a bit of the old one. Um, <clears throat> magic um, silicon all I want is a little bit like that that's enough put that to one side so it doesn't fall over right put a little blob on there don't want too much I think I've got too much here Yeah, that should be enough actually. I don't need that bit. I just want a small bit. Stick out of the way. And now all I want this for really is just to stop it moving. When I put it in there. Look at that there, that's see. If I can I can just line it up like that. And that'll stop that glass. From moving about but it does sit in there better now i've got the gap at the front whereas i did before but if you see now i actually did <laughs> i said to you guys i put that in the old one stuff to put a bit of shine on it i did spray it afterwards because it still looked a bit too dull i wasn't happy with it so there that's our glass in now we want to put our um front pins in 
for the steering. They just push in in the top bar like that. And that's all there is to that. You stick them in like that. Then the next stage, you put your, your seating area in. So that should just drop in around there. Like that. Everything's lined up, isn't it? Yeah. Hang on, that glass is a bit. No, the glass is alright, actually, I think. Let me just check. Yeah, the glass is alright. Put the old seating bit in. Like that. Now, this piece, when you put that bit in, make sure the flat piece is, is this side nearest you. So, when you drop your pin in, it should drop into the actual. I'll get it to line up. It ain't gone in there. It ain't gone in there. So, I need to adjust it. If it's the right way round. You've got to get that lined up. You know, put E in that way, and then it's got to line up with that button on the bottom of the um, wheel. I mean, this could be because I sprayed it. Yeah, he's turning like that. Could be because I sprayed it. It's not going in. I mean, he ain't going in deep enough, I don't think, myself. It might be my imagination. It might not be. Yeah, that's how it goes in, yeah. I'll get there in a minute, folks. Trust me. And you can always look inside to see. Yeah, he's in there, actually. Yeah, he's in there. Right, and then... We put our suspension on, and that goes like that. Don't worry about that though. There's nothing to do with that, so don't worry about that. Put your thing in there like that. Then you get your wheel pieces, or you get that piece first. Then you put that in there, just so it's hanging like that. I mean, put the tyres on the wheels yet, and then you've got to put these. I better get the tyres, folks, don't I? Hang on, that. That's how you, go, how you go anyway. Let me sort some tyres out. Okay, I've sorted some tyres out. It's nice new tyres on here. Right, now these here bits, if we, I've got some muck on behind here. Put them in like that, and then they line up with the um, holes in there, you see, like that. Put the old muck on my hands here, I've been polishing. I gave the wheels a quick polish up before I come back to you. I've got muck on my hands now. Right. This one goes in the same nut. You can mix them up, really. And that's where you get your steering from. And then the only next bit is drop your back ones in there. Drop your bottom piece on. And that's about it. Just make sure everything's all fit and nice before you want to um, start doing it up. If you look there and see, try the steering out, yeah, it all works. And then the easy part then is just put your rivets in. And it's away you go. Make sure you push down like that. Oh, that's going to fit nicely. And that's all you do, folks. Put the rivets in. There's my rivets. I'm going to do that now. I don't want to get muck on the car. I'll wipe my hands off a sec before I do that. Bloody old polish gets everywhere it does. Right then. So then we use our... Um, I managed to get some more of this down Traeger. I bought some online because Traeger never had any, but it was only the... It was a small packet like this. And, well, I, I like me usual if you know what I mean so I was doing Trago the other day Trago again see comes to the rescue and they had some down there so right we'll hold that together we'll put a little bit in there 
on your little bit of neck, crap old neck if you're listening or watching, on your little bit, not wallpaper it, and we're going to put, use our old style rivets for this one, because I look, think they look really realistic, I don't intend taking this one apart again, that's the only thing with these, if you use these they're right buggers to get out again, you've got to try and prize them out, because you, you'll have a hell of a job to drill them out, but you, you can get them out eventually. Right, that's the first one done, but I, the secret is not to put too much glue, just enough to hold it, not go, you know, over the top with the glue. So we'll just put a little bit there. I've got a bit of fluff on there, look. Where did that come from? Have I put enough on there? I think I have. That would definitely be enough. And drop our other rivet in. And there you go. Let him settle. And that should do that. I'll get rid of this glue now. And that should be enough, folks. There we go. Give him a bit of a clean off. He's rolling nice. He's looking nice. All I've got to do now, put the old um, stickers on, the learner plate stickers, and paint this chrome up, and then we'll um, take a look at it on the old turntable and see what we've got, you know. See what hours come out. It don't look too bad at the moment. All working nicely. Beautiful. Okay, guys. Here we are. This is, um, if you remember, this is what this um, thing looked like. As I, um, I think I've already said, Ian Hulley sent this one in quite a while back. And it didn't have any um, figures in it, so I left it on the back burner, really, for quite some time. But I managed to get a set on um, eBay. And um, I thought, well, I can start this one now. So um, there was a hole in the front bonnet. Anyway, that didn't trouble us because I had another shell, but I could have filled that up. But anyway, after we did our magic, this is what we ended up with. Look at the finish on this. I think this is one of the better ones I've done, actually. I've done quite a few of these. And this one, well, I'm pretty impressed myself how this came out. I did repaint the um, driving school wheel on the top. I wasn't going to, but... It looked a bit too faded, and when I saw the finish of the, the actual car, I thought, why not? And um, I'm glad I did. So anyway, if you um, enjoyed this video and you want to see some more, I will be back as soon as I can with another one. But until then, I'm going to have to say cheerio for now, and um, I'll catch you again soon. Bye-bye for now.